Okay. Back at it again. Luck didn't work out in the tournament just like last year, but you know what? I'm going to end this year off with a bang. I mean, it's me and Tim once again, you know? It came so goddamn close the last time. Jesus. Okay, you know what? Just shake everything out. Shake all those energy. Shake all that emotion out. Let's just get down to it. Business as usual. Please let the questions be in my favor. He he does remember that he won last time, right? What the fuck <laughs> was that? I don't even... <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> when am I done doing this? Um, listen, just go out... <laughs> Answer some questions. Be specific when specifics in the title, and let's hope you spend something we like this time. You ready to play? Yeah, oh. I mean, what? You go ahead and do your thing. I forgot. Oh no, I was just gonna say, yeah. Um, I knocked out Sean Wasserkrug. Uh, that was really fun. Uh, since then, I've uh, won a teams match with you. That was really fun. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we won one. We beat Brooklyn and them at the beginning of the oh. year. The, 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 the witch of the garbage um, classic moment. Um, and uh, I haven't won since. No, I beat Coho. Fuck. You beat Coho? Fucking you get a Coho slice tonight, sucks. too. The slice is here. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's play. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Multiplex Movie Warzone. Uh, we got a good match for you. Timber Call versus Ryan Payne 2. The sequel, Electric Boogaloo, The Quickening, Armed and Fabulous, On the Rocks, all the titles you can think of. Bar, how are you feeling about this matchup? Uh, excited, uh, energized. Uh, where's my thesaurus to continue on with this bit? Are you enthused? There we go. Yes, are I'm enthused. Ready to yeah. bruise? Okay, don't okay, okay, hip hop. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna bring in our competitors. Hi, mom. <laughs> okay, so round one's gonna work like this eight different questions, eight different categories. You get a lot of right, you get a bonus question, yada yada yada. Uh, so three reviews and a challenge allotted to you throughout the entire match. Your first question comes in the category of actors and actresses. Who played the best friend of a Meryl Streep character in 1983 and the mother of Meryl Streep's character in 2018? Yeah, Meryl Streep's got a uh, big family. This is this proves she could play Norman Bates. Five. A boy's best friend with his mother too. Shit. Well, hands oh. down. Pens down. Let's go to Tim. I have no idea. That's a great question. Though. And Ryan? Fuck, my pen ran out of ink before I realized it, but if you can't tell, it says share. If you can't read it, I'll, I'm okay with that. Let fuck? me let me full screen you. If you really can't read it... What is the answer you wrote? <laughs> share. Jesus. Um, I'm going to leave that one up to you. To, not accept, to accept, I think we cannot accept it, but if you want a challenge to get a further ruling on it, you are welcome to. Okay, Bar, give us our second question. And Finn, you're reading this. Alright, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, your next category is in Mystery Thriller. <clears throat> Which member of Regina's family dies at the beginning of Charade? Do you like or the game Charades? I know you like the movie Charade, but do you like the game Charades? Um, you know what? Yes, I do. I'm actually... It's, it's when I get to use my acting. Acting! Five. Of course! Four. Three. Two. One. That's the ticket. Let's <laughs> go to Tim. I said brother. And Ryan. I said sister. Uh, both incorrect. Looking for husband. Ah. If you get into your third question, which comes in the category of sci-fi fantasy... What is the first and last name of Chris Tucker's character in The Fifth Element? I'm not going to lie. I don't think this would be that good. I, I'm with you. I, I I think this is a part of a certain style of action movie that just does not vibe with me. Yeah, same here. Fuck. Ethan's going to kill me, though. Four, three, two, one. 
Hands down. Dude has gremlins two on his top. <laughs> never talk. Let's go to Tim. I've never seen it. I have no idea. And Ryan. I think it's Ruby Rod. Ruby Rod is correct. All right. Is your next question is going to come in the category of action adventure. What is the name of the second Dirty Harry film? And just because we kind of got distracted during that question, I'm just going to say uh, the two share films, uh, just in case anyone watching it, from uh, Silkwood and Mamma Mia, here we go again. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, I knew it more from the musical. Five, four, three, two. Yeah, I don't know. Hands down, not the film in your usual strength category. That's interesting. Let's go to Ryan. Uh, Magnum Force. And Tim. I have nothing. Magnum Force is correct. <clears throat> I can get into your next film, or our next question, which comes in the category of comedy. Norm MacDonald. Stars as a man who creates a revenge for hire business in what film? Do you like Norm Macdonald Bar? If who you know, I mean, you're didn't. gonna look like an asshole because he died. Who didn't? Uh, his best role was as a. Uh, I mean, OJ Simpson certainly did not like him. <laughs> this just in: murder is now legal in the state of California. Ben, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go to him. <laughs> I've just heard people talking about this movie, so I said dirty work. And Ryan. I actually loved his ABC show, The Norm MacDonald Show, uh, Dirty Work. Dirty Work is correct. Thanks to everybody who watched that the last couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> the next question, Bar. Going to come in horror. What is the name of the hotel in The Shining? I prefer The Shining. I knew this joke was coming. Do you want to get sued? Do you want to get sued? <laughs> there are some jokes where I can read you like a large print font, like font book. No TV and no beer make Homer go crazy. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Hands down. Simpsons reference. Let's go to Ryan. Going, <laughs> uh, the Overlook Hotel. And Tim. The Overlook Hotel. The Overlook, the Overlook Hotel, both acceptable. Yes. <clears throat> As we get into your penultimate question, which comes in the category of animation, <laughs> what is the profession of the title character in Porco Rosso? Porco Rosso. It's a name that rhymes. Oh my god, I thought you were going with like Porco Rosso Bermuda Bahama. <laughs> Come on, pretty mama. Five. Four, what have I unleashed? Three, two, one. Oh, you just activated uh... my track. <laughs> Let's go to Tim. Pilot. And Ryan. Oh, I, I, I went low. I said a janitor. <laughs> he is a pilot. So that is correct. As we get into your last category, which is music. In Florence Foster Jenkins, Florence aspires to sing what genre of music? Florence <coughs> Foster Jenkins or Leroy Jenkins? Who is better? Leroy Jenkins! <laughs> One. Hands down. Uh, let's go to Tim. <laughs> Opera. And Ryan. That was my first thought, but I said country. <laughs> Opera is correct. So we are all tied up four to four. Okay, we're going into round two. Round two is going to work like this. You're going to get everybody's going to get a chance to spin the wheel. If they like what they spin, they can keep it. If they don't, they can spin them up. Then they're stuck with it. They're going to get five questions in whatever category they get. They get it right two points, multiple choice, one point. Get it wrong, other player gets a chance to steal. Categories on our lovely wheel tonight are Tim Strengths of 21st Century Peter Jackson directed in 2019 movies, Ryan Strengths of Shakespeare adaptations and Mission Impossible. They also have Oscars. Comedy, <clears throat> family, and the slice. So, uh, Ryan, you're in the lead. Would you like to spin first or defer? I'm going to defer. Not in the lead, but you are higher ranked. Excuse me. Yeah. 
Yeah, we're tied. Yeah, but I'm going to defer. Okay. Tim, this is your spin. And you land on the category of Spinner's Choice. Yeah. So do you want to do Mission Impossible or Peter Jackson? I really want you to take Mission Impossible. If that's what you uh, want me to take, I'll take that. But I want you to be most confident. Um, I watch them more. Re I mean, I watch King Kong and Lovely Bones today, but I haven't watched Middle Earth in a minute. Yeah, so, let's, take, let's take Mission Impossible. Okay, Mission Impossible. Okay. <clears throat> I will give you your questions in the category of Mission Impossible, Tim. Okay. Tim, your first question, Mission Impossible. Yeah. In Mission Impossible, how does Ethan know Krieger was involved in the killing of the IMF agents? Multiple choice. Multiple choice options are A, he whistles a specific tune. B, he recognizes his knife. C, he names the restaurant Ethan hit at. D, he has a marked Bible. B? B is correct for one point. Should have gone for it. <laughs> so your next question. In Ghost Protocol, Kurt Hendricks is initially only known by what code name? Cobalt. That is correct for two points. Next question. Who plays Lindsay Ferris, the agent who dies while Ethan tries to rescue her at the beginning of Mission Impossible 3? Oh, I always forget her name. Um... I've missed this in fandom, too. Repeat the question. Who plays Lindsay Ferris, the agent who dies while Ethan tries to rescue her at the beginning of Mission Impossible 3? Carrie Russell. That is correct for two points. The final confrontation, the final confrontation in Mission Impossible Fallout takes place in what country? Oh. Five. I'll know it on multiple multiple choice. Multiple choice options are A China, B Pakistan, C India, D Nepal. Oh, okay. That is not what I was thinking. Uh can I hear the options again? A China, B Pakistan, C India, D Nepal. D? D is incorrect. Ryan for a chance for a one point steal. Your options are A China. B, Pakistan, C, India, D, Nepal. And I'm between two. Um, Five. Four. Pakistan, B. That is also incorrect. Looking for C, India. Can I bring in Cody for a second? Sure. Okay. I'm really bad at geography. I remembered what I was trying to think of. They're in Kashmir. I, is that like a city and not a country? I don't know, but I, th I thought the answer was Kashmir. That's where it's they in the it's in the geographical region of India. So you're gonna it's gonna be a deal. okay. I didn't. I I'm you're really good. bad with geography. That's fine. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. It, Kashmir. Yeah. Kashmir is the like the more specific, but India is. The gotcha. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, so no challenge no. as we get into your final question. In Rogue Nation, after their first meeting, Hunt sees Ilsa Faust again for the first time at what kind of location? Um, at an opera house. That is correct for two points. So I have 10 in the lead with 11 to Ryan's four. Okay. As we get into Ryan's round two spin, Ryan, here's your first spin. All right. And you land on Oscars. Would you like to keep that or spin again? I'm going to risk it. 
I'm gonna spin again. Okay. And this is the category you are stuck with. And you land in the category of 21st century Peter Jackson directed. Barb, would you okay. like to give Ryan his questions in that category? Sure. <clears throat> All right, Ryan, are you ready for Peter Jackson directed 21st century? Let's go. All right. Your first question. How many rings were given to the elves in Fellowship of the Ring? Three. That is correct for two points. Your next question. Where is Thorin in the opening scene of The Desolation of Smaug? Oh my god. The specifics. Um... Five. He's at the Prancing Pony. That is correct for two points. Your next question. What decade does The Lovely Bones take place in? Five. I didn't get to rewatch this. Multiple choice. Your multiple choice options are A, the 1950s, B, the 1960s, C, the 1970s, or D, the 1980s. Oh, okay. Man, I should have rewatched this for references. I'm going to say 1960s. That is incorrect chance for the one point steal. Oh, your options again are A, the 1950s, B, the 1960s. C, the 1970s, or D, the 1980s? The 1970s. That is correct for one Thank point. Us. And, Bar, before you continue, I do you realize the problem? And then, uh, Just go to this one. Yep, okay, we will do. <clears throat> All right, so your next question. What is the profession of Jack Driscoll in King Kong? He's right here. Would you mind repeating that for me? He's a writer. That is correct for two points. Can mm, no, nah, never mind. Nope, never mind. Okay. And your final question: Who is the second dwarf to arrive at Bilbo's house in an unexpected journey? Oh my god! Fuck. <laughs> Gonna mix these. I mix these two up every single time. Uh, I'm just gonna say Ballin. That is correct for two points. <laughs> All right, so we are tied 12 to 12 as we get into round three. Round three is gonna work like this each competitor is going to get to pick what they want for their one, their two, their three, and their four point question. Categories they will be able to pick from tonight are. Will Smith, recent releases, actors and actresses, drama, mystery thriller, scores and soundtracks, 1980s and 2000s. We're going to let them pick their categories right now, and we'll get back to you right now. Okay, Ryan, you get to pick first. Wow. Sorry, Tim. It's okay. I mean, I didn't expect no. them. Yeah, no, no. we're good. Mm -hmm. well, Jesus Christ. Last time I took that category. Was oh, okay, um... Well, my four is going to be Will Smith. Two points, recent releases. Uh, what were the other categories? Uh, your other categories are Will Smith, recent releases, actors and actresses, drama, mystery thriller, scores and soundtracks, 1980s and 2000s. 2000s for my three. And mystery thriller for one. All right. And Tim. Well, that. I got you. Um, that changed. We were going to take 2000s for three, so. What do you put as three 2000s? He put three, yeah. That's what he put. Okay. Um, so, recent releases for sure is going to be four. Yeah. Um, I guess mystery, mystery thriller, thriller, it's going to have to be. 
of three. Yeah, and then maybe two thousands for my two. Then and, and then draw for one. One. Yeah, that's what's gonna have to be. I love you, buddy. This is, I love you too, buddy. Oh, this is fun. Let's go. Okay, our competitors have picked what the ones their one, their two, their three, and their four point question. Ryan has picked his one in Mystery Thriller, his two in recent releases, his three in 2000, and his four in Will Smith. Whereas Tim has picked his one in Drama, his two in 2000, his three in Mystery Thriller, and his four in recent releases. Uh, I gave Ryan his questions in round two, so I will start off with Tim's questions in round three. Tim, your one pointer in Drama. Who directed Creed? Oh my god, why am I fucking forgetting his name? Ryan Coogler, Jesus. That is correct for one point. <laughs> I almost killed myself. <sighs> okay, now we'll go over to Ryan for his one pointer mystery thriller. Okay. All right, Ryan, your first question, uh, I mean, your one point question. Who directed the 2010s remake of Murder on the Orient Express? I believe it is Kenneth Branagh. That is correct for one point. Okay. Right. Now we'll go back over to Tim for his two in 2000s. In Bruges is mostly set in what country? I have not seen this movie. So I will say, and I've also established I'm bad at geography. So I don't know if this is a country or not. So feel free to laugh at me, uh, all of Multiplex, but Ireland. Incorrect. Looking for Belgium. Bruges is ah. a city in Belgium. Okay. All right. Uh, Ryan, your two-point question in recent releases. There it is. Who directed Artemis Fowl? <laughs> Kenneth Branagh. Oh, my God. Two wow. points. Uh, so now we will go back over to uh, Tim's three-point question in Mystery Thriller. What 1997 mystery film features a magazine called Hush Hush? I have no idea. Basic instinct. Incorrect. Looking for L.A. Confidential. So we're in a situation where Tim must hit his four in order to send it back to Ryan. Tim, your four-point question in recent releases. In Judas and the Black Messiah, what specifically does Roy Mitchell order Bill to do that would ultimately lead to Fred Hampton's death? Okay, so I know what you're looking for, but I hate doing this of how specific. Um, okay, so you didn't say specifically, so I'll just say uh, put something in his drink. And your winner. Okay. Ryan Payne, uh, you can challenge. It just It's not what we had. Uh, I have drug him. So, because specifically wasn't the question. If you okay. want to challenge, you're welcome to. I just, yeah, Cody. I... I I believe he puts it by putting it in his drink. I could be wrong on that, but we'll just challenge. Just I, I am beyond done with this match. Challenge whatever you want. Yeah, let's Go challenge it. it. I'm, I'm okay. All right. Uh, we'll be back after the challenge. We are back from the challenge, and we are accepting the answer. Put something in his drink. So Tim is getting the four points. So uh, if Ryan hits either his three or his four, he wins the match. Okay. All right. So. Ryan, your three-point question in the 2000s. Why is Bill Murray's character in Japan in Lost in Translation? He's shooting for a commercial. And your winner, Ryan, the major pain shooting for commercials, the correct answer. 
So we're going to post-match interviews, starting with our unfortunate second-place finisher tonight, Tim Burkala. Tim, you weren't able to pull off the victory tonight. How are you feeling? Um, I left a lot of points on the board in round one. It was just all movies I didn't know. I think I missed the first four and then hit the second four. So uh, that sucks, but it was just four movies I had no fucking clue. I thought about writing Husband too, but I didn't because I thought that was too obvious. But uh, I haven't seen the charade. Um, but yeah, and then it was just a bit of stake on what to take in round two. I watched Mission Impossible more recently. Should have taken Peter Jackson because I would have swept that. Um and again, round three, just the categories didn't fall in my wheelhouse. That's how it is. Um, yeah, I've just, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> that's true. All right. Uh, we will go over to Ryan. All right, Ryan, uh, you won the match and you have the slice. How are you feeling? Uh <laughs> I was legitimately terrified of getting that slice in the second round, but you know, uh, look, uh, after my mat last match with Tim, I knew this was going to be another close one. I same thing with Tim. Round one, everything was slipping by me. Uh, all I did was just like, if I didn't know it, fine, move past it. I'm not going to try to throw a fit about this. Keep moving forward. And thankfully, round two was more gentle on me. And then my questions in round three. I don't know. I don't know what, what I did for Lady Luck. Apparently, she likes me, so <laughs> I get the slice. That's fair. All right. Uh, well, for your next match, we'll be playing Anthony Tisdall. Uh, how do you feel about that? Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know how I feel exactly. <laughs> by the time, by hell, by the time we, I even go face to face with Anthony, I still don't know how I feel. But I'm looking forward to it. That's fair. Well, thank you to Ryan Barr. Final thoughts on the match? Yeah, um, this was a match that was kind of back and forth the entire time, which always makes for a very entertaining match. Um, both very good players. Um, one just happened to come out on top. All right. Well, thank you to Tim. Thank you to Ryan. Thank you to Cody. Thank you to Barr. I'm Caleb Bowman. This has been Multiplex Movie Warzone. Have a good one. Fun storm in the castle. Think it'll work? It would take a miracle. Bye-bye. Bye.